we've both seen the power of what the black dollar can do. Yo, what's going on, man? Welcome to Expeditiously. I'm your host, Tip T.I. Harris. Now, what we do here on Expeditiously is we have conversations that uh, can push the culture and the generation forward, and we have those conversations with people who are relevant to the discussion. My guest here today needs no introduction. His name is Killer Mike, personal partner of mine, also known as, by his government, Michael Render. Uh, <laughs> he's here today for a very important discussion, man, uh, yeah. financial literacy and about economic empowerment to serve communities that that remain dis- disproportionately underbanked. Yeah. All right. The one half of the rap duo, uh, Run the Jewels, sitting right here next to me, is known for his music and activism, uh, and for years been preaching banking black and generational wealth, even to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike has started a new digital bank for blacks and Latinos. Uh, Focused on modern banking for the culture, okay? So he's here to talk to us about that. Yeah. You want to uh, tell us about Greenwood? Well, I didn't just get stoned and start a bank. That's not... You, you didn't? Know, I, no, I... No, nah, that's... Damn, I was hoping that was the... That's how... That was the conception. But, man, the, my, uh, one of the guys who, who helped... Who helped found help running it, Reese, that brother's from... He's banking. He's one of those black guys that the um, head of Wells Fargo said he couldn't find. He's out of major banking institutions such as Wa- Wachovia and other banks that have been... and. The, the spearhead of all this is a guy named Mark Glover, mm. um, who we both know from okay. Noontime Records, from Bounce TV. Um, he does, I mean, Ryan Glover. Ryan, I'm sorry, okay, Ryan okay. Glover. I was just about to say. No, 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 no. I was thinking about someone else tomorrow. But with Ryan, Ryan Glover has been successful in Atlanta a long time. You okay. Know, when we were young men, Absolutely. kids, he was building a record company when record companies were the thing to build. Absolutely. Got out of that, Ryan got, got into television. Got Bounce TV. Built, Bounce TV sold for hundreds of millions dollars. So he's never gotten anything that he wasn't intended on being <laughs> successful with. Yeah. So when he and, and Paul... Um, and Paul like, Judge, yeah, Paul Judge, who's a yeah. tech g- genius and giant, when they got and said, "Hey, man, that the thing that you've been pushing and pushing other black people to pay attention to the last four or five years, we think we have something to bring to market that's pretty innovative and that can help." Mm-hmm. Um, and na- neighborhoods like the one we came from, our neighborhood, the west side of Atlanta, is a black enclave that held social, political, and economic power. And as things like the crack era happened, Reaganomics, things of that nature, mm-hmm. we started to lose a lot of the economic footing. So. Growing up in Acaria Heights, which is right next to Center Hill, where you at, right. that neighborhood was founded and gentrified by black people for black people. They right. pushed poor white peoples out. Yeah. They got well, they pushed them out, and also white people decided to leave when they saw. They no, had no, a no. Black it wasn't neighbor. like night flight. It wasn't like white flight. Okay. It wasn't like Kirkwood, and it wasn't like Southwest Atlanta. Okay. In Southwest Atlanta, they wanted to. Be, they literally built a wall. Uh. The Acaria Heights black people said, "We target." This area, mm. we are buying these houses at a thirty percent markup, mm. and those people went further out to Smyrna and Austell and Marietta and places. So, gotcha. I, and I say that because shit didn't just happen to us by happenstance. Mm-hmm. Everything is not a defensive maneuvering. These were black people like Herman Russell, like the King um, family, Billy McKinney, um, former representative. These were people who, along with working class, salt of the earth people like my grandparents and your grandparents, mm-hmm. said we choose. To live here, right? So, so okay. that and they and so that that enclave went from being a powerhouse to we started seeing things like check cashing places move in mm. and banks move out. The same black banks that had perform, you know, that had given loans and stuff. Some of them started to struggle. They moved out, and the major banks pulled out. And then we were left with essentially check cashing centers. Mm. Well, those check cashing centers may charge the average worker class or the the, the, the person that's not expendable. You know, the person that really got to be there serving your drinks, mm-hmm. taking care of your kids. It started to take up to a quarter of their money in order to cash a check. So for every dollar you're cashing, you're only getting a 75 cent return. And that was just unfair. And plus, you ain't making shit in the first place. You're not making it. And that community went from being a one to a, a, that was one of ownership to now, I mean, you know, it's one where yeah. you see more renters. Yeah. So people are renting, don't even have the ability to own a home. So they need something. They need to be able to save money. Right. And this gives them the opportunity to save money. It also, this bank needs to help them stay on point. So what does this bank bring? If you look at Greenwood as a bank, I, if I get paid on a Wednesday, or if I get paid on a Friday, but my bill is due on a Wednesday, having the option of pulling that money two days early helps me pay my bills on time, mm-hmm. which helps and gives me the ability to better my credit, mm-hmm. which helps once I save my 3%, have the ability to now be in a rent-to-buy situation or to buy a home. Right. And if we're not given that chance, it starts with the very small thing. If we're not given that chance, then we forever kind of stay behind the eight ball. So Greenwood is important, and it was named for Greenwood the town. 
that mm-hmm. was in Tulsa that was burned and rioted, that was destroyed. Damn. It was as successful as Auburn Avenue ever was. It was successful as Harlem ever was and Detroit and any other black major city, D.C. and others included, and it was destroyed because of hate and anger. Mm. This is the rebirth of that spirit and circulating our dollar, you know, and making sure that people like us are doing business, people like the people that we once were and live amongst our south of the earth working class black folk have a great banking experience and medium and small businesses by the creatives and other people that are off the beaten path Mm -hmm. can have a chance to get capital. That's dope. Now, uh, two questions in one. Yeah. Uh, One, the first one, Uh, I heard you, you, you guys also partnered with Ambassador... Young. Ambassador Young. Yeah, he's on the board. Uh, who's our, both of our mentors. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, how did that happen? And also, uh, is there room for other founders slash investors <laughs> well, to, I, you know, Ryan to is, find involvement? Ryan is, I, you know, with me, I always expect to see you in the same rooms. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I think it's a dinner tonight we might both be, be in, you know oh, what okay. I mean? So, you know, with, you know, what I just, I have been wanting to to be in some way involved in something official on the banking side. Okay. So when Ryan called me once we got the details worked out, I was happy to be. And in big part, because Ambassador Young is a part of it. Right. And that's significant because Ambassador Young was a mayor that essentially he kept, he t- made his $50,000 salary. Right. He worked his butt off. Right. And he did it not for profit. Right. You know, he was You know, he wasn't hooking and crooking. He made sure the city got its opportunity. And mm. even with the Olympics, didn't make a dime and brought, you know, billions of dollars to the city and help us grow exponentially. Right. Um, he, as agreed with Dr. King, and Dr. King's last two years mm-hmm. was about saying that economically we need to be taking care of ourselves. Right. And I, what I like about Ambassador Young is he's not exclusive. He's not a person that says blacks need to do it without anyone else. Right. He understands allyship. He understands, just like former white mayor William Hartsfield, Mm -hmm. that blacks and whites in Atlanta, and now Latinos as well, Mm -hmm. have more to gain in cooperation with one another. So seeing him on the board gave me a lot of confidence that this was going to be a successful endeavor because I know the men to be involved are of good character. And, you know, as for me, That's extremely important. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Because the way you enter into a business deal is probably the way it's going to end. Yeah. If you enter into a business deal with turmoil and confusion and and a lack of trust, then that is going to be the foundation or the fundamental structure of that relationship. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because it doesn't have to stay that way. Just communicate to me. It usually does. You're yeah. right. Now, and yeah. there are exceptions to yeah. every rule. But yeah. if you but just you look at, you know, the majority of the time, how you enter into a situation is usually right. how it stays. Yeah. Um, it's great to have this conversation with you because I have, uh, I, I, I have heard you say, Several times, you know, in many different, many different ways of verbiage. But I will quote you here. Uh, The best way to punish a wicked system of capitalism is to use capital, your dollar, to show that systemic racism is bad for money. It's bad for business. Do you feel this is the most important and powerful method to combating systemic racism for for our community? One of. It it helps if you, you take boxing. So. You know, a, a, a right hook is a nasty punch. You right. know what I'm saying? A uppercut, an overhand right. Right. Boy, but that, you that set jab. Up, you got to set it up with the, the jab. It, you know what I mean? You got to set it up with the jab. Set. Got this, to get him to blink that, so that, you can most, land it correctly. The most important punch in boxing, right, just that right. simple jab, because that sets up the combinations and, and your chance to win. So one of the most important tools in your arsenal is, is, is the jab of financially taking control of your own life, mm-hmm. meaning a lot of times as young people, um, we have set, we've been set back. You know, your parents sure. might have had a bill in your name, and you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I'm talking about the outside. I'm not talking yeah, about nobody man. else. Or, or we're just, we're just, ha- we're totally ignorant. We've never, we've never been introduced to lack banking. of exposure, lack of education. Exactly. When I, we were young, your grandparents would take you to get a bank account or something. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. or, or, or if you had some uncle that would hustle, they'll give you twenty dollars. Your yeah. grandma might make you save ten, but you got in the habit. Of money as a tool. I learned shoebox banking. Same thing. You know, you know what I'm saying? Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. My, my grandparents, they put some money in the bank, and my sister, after my grandmother died, I still found a couple thousand dollars. On the you know, so, That's right. You know, you, you, they, 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 they move with discernment and discretion. But I just say that because 
the, the younger, especially our young men, I don't want to say the young men, the, 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 long, the younger you learn to control your money mm. and control yourself and your temper, mm-hmm. the stronger and the better off you're going to be. Our girls get that because our girls, usually, you know, he driving that Civic or that Nissan, that's her car. Right. Because she understands the importance of credit and banking on time. So sure. she, she takes care of those things. And, we and she to- takes time to listen. She takes time to listen and actually retain the information Absolutely. that's being uh, the, uh, from from the messages that are being conveyed absolutely, to her, absolutely. Uh, from having sons and daughters, it's night and day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Having sons and daughters is night and day. I, you know, I love all of my children the same, <laughs> uh, but you know, getting a message across to your son is 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 a far, challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a far more tedious task <laughs> than getting a message across to your daughter. Yeah. Uh, not to say that they aren't, you know, as capable. Yeah. But they just have uh, girls are wise younger. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they advance a lot faster, absolutely. mentally, absolutely, and you know, and they kind of they catch on to, I guess, the theory of life. They get it they, and they maturity, get it. absolutely. Yeah. They get it. They get it. But okay, so now uh, I remember you and I. Yeah, uh, we just on a on a normal weekday afternoon, we called. Uh, Young Dolph. Dolph was there. And Shouts out to Dolph. Right Thug on. came and Young through. Thug. Shouts out to Thug. Ra Ra came. Shouts out to him. Okay. Jock popped up at one of them. Banner was already banking with them. Okay. With Citizens Trust. Yeah. Um, But what we did was, now I want to keep, I'm going to stick with Dolph and Thug right here. So, okay, gotcha. Uh, we got Dolph and we got Thug on a, just a normal weekday afternoon. Like a Wednesday or Thursday. A Wednesday or Thursday. Just to pull up. Yep. To Citizens Trust Bank and, yep. and, and no cap. This was Young Thug's first bank account. Yeah. This was Young Thug's right first up. bank account. I was proud of me him. and Mike, me and Mike pulled Thug on Cascade yep. at the Citizens Trust Bank Cascade and, Farrell. and made the man bring a bag full of money. <laughs> he did. And and a and a million dollar check and open up a bank account. Absolutely. Uh and and you know, that like you know what I'm saying, those types of things, uh it didn't happen for us. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like no, you know no one did as, that for us. as much mentorship as as we can accredit uh the generation uh before us uh to to giving us and offering us like Outcast and Goody Mob yeah. and you know others. They never you know, nobody ever pulled us in and said, Hey man, this is what you do with your money. Yeah. Hey man, this is how you you know, this is how you handle your finances yeah, and so on absolutely. and so forth. Uh, so for us to have an opportunity to do that for, you know, the next generation, yeah. it felt good to me. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You know, but how, how like, you know, what 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 part do does does that role play in, in your legacy as you see it? Man, I hope like like I'm a I'm a fan of both guys we just talked about. Right on. I never make a record with them. Just like I'm a fan right. just of them as the, the, the entertainers they are, but first and foremost is black men. I've seen them help other black men out of it through, right. through art. You know, I've helped them to have leadership. And my thing is, if you if you teach the point person on any team, you're teaching the team. That's right. And their influence in the, in matters of my children from a pop standpoint yeah. are more popular. They, they Pop culture. Yeah, pop culture standpoint yeah. are more popular, you know. Yeah. Um, so... I want my 17, 18 year old son to hear it. And, right. and I know that if Dolphin Thug are saying similar things to what his dad's reinforcing at home, not only is it slick and it's cool, he's gonna it's gonna stay with him because he's hearing it's, it from it's all gonna sides. Stick. It's gonna stick. Yeah. Because it's hitting him from all sides. And I just give a damn about black men. Right on. Like I give a shit about Thug. I give a shit about Dolph. I give a shit about the dudes they beef with. So I give a, <laughs> I would I would like to yeah, see Yeah, we love them all. Bro, yeah, I, I really would because I'd like to see us alive. And 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 should should we pass? And hopefully, when we all old men and great, something be left for our grandchildren. That's right. You know, it's important the cultural imprint that Thug makes. But educating Thug educates about twenty young men that's because right. they're gonna imitate and emulate what they see him do. That's and right. that's what's from within his circle. So you can imagine how far. And I'm gonna tell black men, man, when when we get control of that coin. The, the control of our lives gets steadier. That's real. Your, your relationship with your children, even if you're not with their mother, gets better because you have a stability that she then sure. has to respect as well. And in terms of fit for marry, you know, women, it's important. Like my grandmother taught my grandfather 
you know, the tenements of, you know, my grandfather had worked to take care of his sisters, but he still gambled, shot right. folk, you know, he, <laughs> you know, he did. So marrying a nurse who was financially from a fan, family that owned land and that understood banking mm -hmm. was probably the wisest thing he could have did. Marrying my wife, who grandma ran a liquor house, who she understood money before I did, right. helped me understand the importance. So I think that as a culture, black men, if we take control of our coin and as black people, mm -hmm. you know, black people, brown people, people that are working class, if we pivot into places like Greenwood, where your bank is in your hand now, okay. so we don't worry about the brick and mortar that's exiting, I think we create 15 more young thugs and 15 more dolls and the ones that don't even got a sing and rap. That's They're right. just young men and women that know what to do with their dollars. I think that's important because, you know, we come into a lot uh, of, of of money in our lifetime. Like, you know what I'm saying? We might not work much for it, but yeah. money passed through our hands. Yeah. Okay? Speci just to speak specifically, the medium African-American family income uh, annually is $41,500. Yeah. However, the annual African American spending. What we all spend together. What we all collectively spend together is one point two actually one point three five trillion now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How do we convert income to generational wealth? Because whether we hustle to get it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whether we gamble to get it, yeah. Whether we rob to get it, yeah. whatever we do to get it, or whether we work to get it, whatever we do to get it, it hits our hands. Yeah. But when it but when it hits our hands, what we decide to do with it, that discipline that must be yeah. uh, instilled, taught, and and practiced. Yeah. That's what's like. How do we how do we instill, teach, and 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 motivate uh, our young people and ourselves? Because I need more discipline too. You know what I'm saying. But how do we do that so we can you know uh, have more generational wealth among us? So I've I've seen it argued. I think the name of the book is The Myth and Propaganda of Black Vine Power. There 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 are two sides of the argument. Now, so on one side you have very leftist of what people describe liberal as typically um, very conscious and pro black in perception. And they're saying that this, the numbers you just stated is a mythology mm. that, that the 1.2 trillion won't save black people from the position they're in, and 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 there. So there's an argument. Let's explain that. Well, I want to. I want to hear what their position to, is. What they're saying is that you're spending your dollar, but it doesn't matter because the dollar is escaping the community. Now on the other side, you have conservatives like Walter E. Williams, who's a natural economist. You have Thomas Sowell on the other side that are saying no, your dollar matters in this economy. And capitalism is the best system for you, although not perfect. It allows you to provide goods and services. And for those goods and services, in return, you get the opportunity to gain capital, to, to pass on wealth, okay. and to employ others. You keep it going. Now, the truth, to me, is somewhere in the middle. Okay. Right? Buy, yeah, buying shit alone will not save the African-American community. Right. But until you get to a means where you produce the raw materials that, that do shit— a good median is to at least own the stores. Okay. So when I sneaker shop, if I have to after buy, I tend to buy instead of pivoting toward even a stock X, who are the black dealers or black stores right. that I could buy from? Right. Because I know if I support that, I'm supporting that store, That's which excellent. supports that owner, right. which supports five and ten employees, right. which puts more dollars. And then those kids go down to Peter and Walker Street. They spend that at Escobar. Right. They spend it at Bankhead Seafood. Mm -hmm. Now that dollar's moved three times That's right. in our community. It's helped to employ three different sets of people. Okay. It's moved that. Much like Greenwood, the place in Tulsa, was a self-sufficient town in the middle of a white racist city mm. because that dollar had to turn 36 times a month, although the black customer dollar leaving your community will not save you. I would have to argue the black customer dollar, consumer dollar staying in mm. helps your community and the greater community so much to the point that when I interviewed and told that to the Bloomberg magazine said that you know, focus buying. If our com economy does better, the greater community does better. The head of the feds in Atlanta agrees with that. Mm. So when people tell me that the black buying power is a mythology, I'll nod and I'll, I'll, I'll say, OK, but what isn't a mythology is if you sharpen the tip of your spear. Right. If we're spending money like here, mm -hmm. it's not it doesn't work. But the minute your spear does this mm -hmm. and it says, I'm only going to move my money here. Right. And when that happens, what you start to see is a transition. Well, what's the transition you see? The day after we did that, mm. we said, well, what's going to happen next? We don't know. More black people um, got accounts. They were flooded with accounts, had to hire new employees at the banks. But about 30 days later, Wa um, not Wachovia, Wells Fargo mm -hmm. came up with $60 million for black mortgages. Mm. They didn't do that for black and brown. 
Mm. They didn't do that for disenfranchised or, or poor. They did it for black right. mortgages. And they specifically said black at a time where they weren't. You get what I'm saying? Right. So for me, when, when, when people argue the mythologies or they argue, and it's not me trying to argue with that professor, but again, he did this professor. Well, I mean, uh, the, the argument on the other side is given by an economist. Sure, Walter Williams is an economist, right? And he's saying he studies this. Yeah, that's all he, he spent his life studying. Yeah, yeah. he okay. said, "Negro, take your money, take care of yourself first. Mm-hmm. Partner with other in your communities and use that community's money as a focus to grow." Now, when you talk when you talk about uh, the gentleman who 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 said that uh, that that it was a myth. Yeah, I got to give him a shout out. Because okay. But see, the thing is, right? Uh, it's a good book. Is it he saying that the number is wrong? No, no, he's not saying the numbers are wrong. He's just saying that it's, it's unfocused. That, you know, essentially. Well, see, this is how I, this is how I see it, right? So, it, <clears throat> unless he provides. And it's free, and, too. I want to say you can download it for free. Okay, definitely. Unless he provides. What, what, what's free? His book. Oh, his book is free. Now, I ain't going to lie. He passed well, the, the best what, test in the world. Uh, okay, the myth and propaganda of um, black p- buying power and um, the by myth and propaganda of black buying power. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, this is the thing, right? You, you can't tell me that water isn't wet if I've stood out in the rain before. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I understand. If I've been pushed in a pool before, you're going to have a hard time convincing me that water isn't wet. You yeah. know what I mean? And we've both seen the power of of what the black dollar can do. Absolutely. We've both been a part of it. We've redirected funds. Absolutely. The black, and matter of fact, it made us millionaires. You Absolutely. know, it changed the course of our lives. Absolutely. Uh, and you told me a story of, of uh, how uh, kids at the AU Center decided to not drink Coca-Cola and not fly yeah, Delta during apartheid during apartheid yep. and that brought about change in South Africa yes because the Coke and Coke and Delta both being out of here if you get African Americans protesting and not spending money here right on on Coke and Delta in particular right everybody has to start listening that's right <laughs> so that, I absolutely. think that pokes holes in his theory altogether so I think we have clear... well you should have them on because I'm not here I mean, to, sure, to dispute sure, sure. his theory as much to say there are nuances where you're explain. It, it often gets explained to me as that as either or that that's a mythology. Mm. But we never talk about what um, Dr. Amos Wilson talked about, what Dr. John Henry Clark talked about. We never talked about what Johnson, what Johnson Products did, what Bronner Brothers did. Being the owners of production. Okay. Right? You know, there was a time where black people didn't buy grease from white folk. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Wasn't no Paul Mitchell sold in the community. Okay. You knew it was coming from Bronner Brothers. You knew it was coming from, and there was a pride in that. That's look, right. look at the old Soul Train. Yeah. Who's the commercials? Yeah, you're right. So, so we have a lot. My grandfather. Soul Glow. My grandfather would say, exactly. <laughs> you know, my S grand- Curl. <laughs> my, my grandfather would often say, man, he'd say the worst thing to happen to Negroes is integration. And I used to think. I heard that a lot. Yeah, I, I, was like, a lot. I was like, what are you talking about? You like skin with good health. What you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but what he was talking about was it took dollars. It, it robbed us of our dollars started escaping and they didn't come back. Yeah. So my grandfather saw a community that was once proudly black. Our, our gas station is Barbara on the Exxon to the left of Douglas. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? My um, Our home loan was from, was from a black bank. He saw that world change. Mm-hmm. And when the dollar escaped, us becoming more powerless. So what I, my only argument, not even versus um, um, Professor Ball, is, well, what is Dr. Walter E. Williams saying? Mm-hmm. The economist. Right. Because he studied capitalism. He's proven himself to be successful. And I'm not saying capitalism is perfect, right? Mm-hmm. But there has been, when there was nothing in our community, it was a young man named Fat Steve. Um, yeah, was no a, Fat Steve. Who's a drug kingpin. I just wrote a letter for him um, and help, hoping that he gets let out, you know, on an early release because he's a nonviolent offender. How but, much time did he get? Um, I think they gave him, well, they gave him, he's, yeah. It's a 30 ball? He, I think, not 20, I think. 20. Okay. But, but we, I, you know, if you want to write a letter too, I sure love it. Sure will. So with Steve, um, Steve was the first person to sit me down and say, I, I own these amount of houses in this community. Right. To, and, and, and what, because we, we was always dreaming about getting out. Right. Oh, man, we go ball. We go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was the first person that helped me see value in, in our community and helped me understand the power of a dollar in the, you can be 24 years old and around to own 20 houses in a barbershop and things right. of that nature. So I'm just saying that our dollar, 
I believe is powerful in a way. It if is. organized, though. It is. If, if organized. All dollars are powerful. Absolutely. Anytime. So we speak a lot about voting, and we're going to talk a little bit about that later on. And I know a lot of people feel like, you know, voting doesn't matter, and they already got it in the bag, and they're going to do what they want to do yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, of course. Voting we, matters, though. We, agree, we disagree with that yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> emphatically because, you, you know, hey, man, I'm not saying that the government or the system is beyond uh, treachery. You they are I'm certainly. I'm not saying they beyond treachery. Treachery is definitely within their DNA. However, uh, what you do, what you what you learn to do, especially as a chess player, you learn to study your enemy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. And in studying the enemy or the uh, now I won't say the enemy, in studying the opponent. Yeah. Uh, you you if you see them taking drastic measures to prevent you from moving a certain direction, you might want to lean. You into might want to lean into, into that, that direction. Car. You dig what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I'm not trusting their uh, uh, altruism. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching the moves that they make, and by process of elimination, saying, "Hey, if they want to keep me from doing this." Maybe we should get to Maybe doing this. You know what I'm saying? Because it could be effective. <laughs> this shit could be exact, exactly what they need us not to do in order for them to carry out their plan yeah. without without fail. Uh, but <clears throat> every time you spend a dollar on a product, you're voting. Yeah, absolutely. You're yeah. voting for a corporation. If yeah. you go buy some Nikes, you just voted for Nike. Yeah. If you buy some Yeezys, you voted you voted for Adidas. Uh, and and we've seen black people. Turn corporations into billion dollar corporations yeah, and made, turn individuals yeah, into billionaires. Yeah, we made Nike. Absolutely. Yeah, we made Nike. We 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 made we we built that corporation. You know? And when we built Nike, they built Jordan and absolutely. so on and absolutely, so forth. Absolutely. And now it's gotten to the point where now Jordan can uh pull in Drake yeah. or, or Travis Scott. I mean, or you I see mean, what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, look at the brilliant brothers. Like like Chris look at Paul what? is a brilliant brother who's a Jordan guy, right? Chris is the guy who's been wearing the the HBCU, you know, in, early in the playoffs, like just brilliant. Right. Look at look at what a dollar provided. You know, in terms of mm. an athlete that's going back to an HBCU now. That's what I want black people to understand. You don't have to have a victimization relationship with money. Right. That's what Greenwood is really saying. You don't have to have a predatory relationship with money in which check cashing places are taking it or or the bank that you bank with has a twenty one percent turn down rate with black people with home loans or car loans or has an even smaller amount in terms of small business. You know what I'm saying? Like we have the opportunity to focus our dollars a weapon. Dr. Claude Anderson talks about that. Right. He said even before you focus on politics, focus on that dollar. Right. You know, like, and I want to tell people in ter- terms of the matters of importance of census and voting. Okay. I know who my great grandparents are because I knew them. My right. great grandmother lived till I was 10. I physically knew them. Mm. Her mother, who had been born a slave, died a free woman. I knew, I knew the daughter of a slave, right? Damn. I know my great grandfather's father, who was also a slave, because he showed up on a census. He was brought out, if his father or grandfather were brought out of, um, his grandfather, actually, I know, was brought out of South Carolina mm. as a slave sale. So if it's not for the U.S. census, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to trace those roots back to Tuskegee, Alabama. And that's something right. that you find uh, you find a lot of importance in the census. I do, I do. Uh, and, 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 it's and you've get been to the preaching it to me. You've been preaching yeah. it to me. I ain't feel now. Give them yet. the raw. I, this is me. This is how old I am. This is my wife and children. This is how old we are. This is where, and that's it. Okay. I don't give many. That's I give him exactly what my granddaddy gave him. Okay. I'm Willie Burke Sherwood. I'm a Negro, a black, or whatever y'all calling y'all self this year. It's three children, one twelve, one eight, you know, one one seven. Uh-huh. My wife is Betty. And that and that was it. That's all they got it's out of here. But with, came with his boxes on. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he <laughs> So, you know, with Burke, I, just, I learned, you know, he was almost probably libertarian in his views, minus, you know, the racism that Hannity distributes, distributes, right. distributes I mean, well, displays on the nightly. But I'm glad I grew up into those radical ideologies because my grandmother would have been into reading, you know, the, the, the mythology of black and propaganda of black buying power. My grandfather would have been watching Walter Williams on the VCR because yeah, he was functionally true. illiterate because he had to work. Damn. He understood the power of a dollar. My grandpa Bunch and my grandpa Willie, both, they read, like I read to them, that was important, but they put money on the table and said count this. Right. And, they, and it was important and to the point where, you know, running around, you learn to count in your head. That's right. You know, so, that's what I do. To my kid can't, they can't believe, like, you know what I'm saying? I just kind of put numbers together yeah, in you my your head, head. Yeah, Especially percentages. Yeah, because it was before the say, trap. 15%. Yeah. 15% off and it's $800. A- absolutely. You dig absolutely. what I'm saying? And, and you we have to, be to, able do that. to come up with that. Absolutely. And voting is important. Well, why, Michael? Because once you do your census, Instead of saying it's 10 people in this block, it says it's 25. 
Right. So instead more of more resources. Yep, yeah, exactly. So instead of the government saying, "Okay, we'll give we'll give you a hundred dollars a person," that there's a thousand dollars for this block, they say we got to give you twenty five hundred dollars for this block. Mm. So that's why I want you to do that, and then your representation changes the more people you have in your block. Right. Then you take your you got that. How does that matter on a local election? Our mayor won by seven hundred and twenty votes. Damn. You could get seven hundred and twenty people in your parking lot with one tweet right now. That's real. You could say, man, we're doing we do a party. it all the time. Bankhead with Bankhead seafood, seafood. Exactly. absolutely. We do you, it all the time. Every, every, every other day. Yeah. We're doing it at Triton Yards or somewhere else or, or the original location. So all that to say, the mayor before her, who left our city with a $200 million surplus and is responsible for the land deal that got Tyler Perry, the biggest movie studio That's in the real. Southeast, and bigger, and not comparable, bigger and than studios out line. west, got the belt line. That mayor won by 702 votes. Mm. So how important is voting? It is the most important thing besides controlling your dollar you can do on a local level. You get caught up in the national soap opera of who's going to win presidency, and right. all it turns into is a Falcons versus Saints argument. <laughs> the only problem is after Falcons and Saints folk argue, they eat in each other's place, go to each other's strip club, and go right. home happy. Right. But with this, in this case, in the case where we are now, on a local level, they got a Bernie Crad and Progressive as sixth commissioner out in DeKalb County, Ted, Mayor, formerly Mayor Ted, an amazing candidate. Fonnie Willis is the new Fulton County District Attorney, amazingly progressive and about winning, not, not only about winning rights and freedoms for people, but it's about restorative justice. Judge Chief Oxford Jackson, no, Chief Judge Oxford Jackson, you know, out in, um, I think hers may be an appointment, but her policy is being imitated by the state to help brothers who are getting out of jail to land a little softer and get back into the workforce right. versus getting $25 in a, in a box, of, box of clothes. So it's important locally. Right. All that to say, 700 votes affecting the city and the counties in the way that it has, it's important. Take your butt out and vote. And it's important for culture. Because if you get the wrong people in, in, in office, uh, especially in local elections, uh, I always describe it to young people as this. If you are a young person in your, your early 20s, late teens, uh, late 20s, whatever, you're a young person and you hanging out until 3.30, 4 in the morning, why would you have uh, your night be dictated or what you can and do, what you can and cannot do at 3.34 in the morning, why would you have that dictated by somebody who's in bed by 8.30? Absolutely. You, don't, you, <laughs> you, want, to be, you want people who understand. I think right. one of the biggest losses we suffered was city council changing the, um, in Atlanta, changing the, the, the night the, the night the club, the oper club hours. operations. That, that lost yeah. a lot of people jobs. Right. It lost a lot of commerce. Um, you know, I still, you know, this went back to the 90s with, you know, we saw policemen being pulled from the ability to have a to have parking lot presence in strip clubs because there were rogue white officers that robbed a white strip club owner. Mm. Because of that, what we have in Atlanta now is you go to the Cheetah, a bunch of strangers come to town, they get in the shootout. Well, if there was an officer there, that shootout never would have happened. So, you know, one of the things that I'd like to see in Atlanta is just clubs and um, police departments be able to be have a symbiotic relationship where the police are right out there in front of the club, the mm -hmm. police are getting paid what they deserve, and mm -hmm. you don't have the ability to see those. Because if niggas keep coming shooting up, they're just going to close us. We're going to close like 12 midnight in L.A. So it's an uncomfortable negotiation, but the <laughs> negotiation is necessary. Because I'd rather walk out to a black police officer in Atlanta or a policeman who's used to policing black people, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden our clubs are closing at 12 and we have agents that, that have all of a sudden been hired because you got a different mayor, different sure. chiefs that don't even know your community. See, sure. if, that's negotiation table. If you watch the Clarence Avon story, you know, and, and if you look at a place like Green, Greenwood, the negotiation table ain't always comfortable for everybody. That's right. But it's beneficial for everyone. That's right. You understand know what I'm we saying? We don't have so, to agree. We just have to, we, we have to compromise. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We have to so give that's a one of the local things I care about because I care about black clubs. Clubs. That makes sense. Um, Blue Flame, Magic City, um, um, Pleasers are important not only because they black own, they hire black staff. That's right. The dancers are not just black. The waitresses are black. The security is the black. The DJs so, are so black. So you're talking the about promoters are black. hundreds of jobs. Yeah. Before before we were putting on concerts at like the Budweiser Superfest, we were promoting at Mr. V, San Susie, v, v Ask your parents about That's those right. places. So black Atlanta on every level. You know, when the mayor said, you know, she wants to make sure Atlanta's not just known you know, for lemon pepper wings and strip clubs. Absolutely, I agree with her. It's but we also, want to make sure. But hold up, that you come on down here, come and get down your and lemon pepper that. wings, but, and uh, hit a strip club. Yeah, and I want you to know that the family that owns that strip club also was one of the biggest donators to the King rallies and marches. 
That's real. So when you talk about the Cato family, right, being of the practitioners and black owners of and, chi- but, and the child and, and the child's, what you're seeing is yeah. when I can't go to the NAACP, right, or the SCLC because they lacking funds because we haven't focused our dollars. Right, we have the numbers man subsidization. We have the yeah. club owners. The weed man. We have you know what I'm saying. We have the moonshine the man. Moonshine That's man, the way the cities really man, work. Absolutely. That's and, the way it worked for the because, Irish with the police in New York. That's the way it worked for the Italians. For the Italians That's with the mafia. What, so absolutely. black people embrace all of who you are. I'll mm. just say that. And I had a bank president tell me one time. You know what I mean? He's not in any any way associated with Greenwood. He owned another black black bank that was very successful every year. He said, Michael, the thing that scares me about black people is we have forgotten your numbers man was as important as any bank president. That's real. In terms of the civil rights and how it was organized and how it was funded. That's real. And so we together and we should be banking together and focusing our dollars together. I had the conversation yesterday. I, t- I taught my first class at Club. Oh, man, uh, congratulations, Appreciate sir. it, man. Right on, You and man. Walker going to get y'all a degree before me. I told man, once. Nah. I just really wanted to go really back to class. I don't really want degree, bro. You, got, really, you know, should know. What the hell I just want to share get. information. I just want to, you know what I'm saying, offer perspective I wanna and insight to the youth. I want to say Dr. Tip Harris. You, well, we can say that now. We say Dr. Dre. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, you dig, you dig what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, so, but I said this yesterday, man. Like, you know, uh, the need to trap or, or, or to hustle or whatnot didn't come from just sheer greed. No, it came from uh, from from necessity. Yeah, it came from the lack of subsidization in our communities that existed in 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 our Caucasian neighbors' communities. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I think that not enough of us understand that we're just taught, you know, crack is whack, say no to drugs, and so on and so forth, which is also true. Absolutely. But we don't see that there is a deficit. There has been a deficit within the within our communities that no other area of operation would 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 uh, uh, would participate in in filling outside of the numbers racket, the drug trade, prostitution, and anything that is outside of the law. The same way poor white people use prohibition. And moonshining, absolutely. Yeah. Moonshining built NASCAR. They're proud Absolutely. We, we, we discussed that in and, the class. Fuck around and say crack, the crack era built music. These you niggas dig what I'm saying? Hold, hold, hold on. Yeah, what you talking about? It damn sure did. I go back to, again, using <laughs> Dr. Dre as a reference. Yeah. Dr. Dre was a DJ who had a dream and had ambition, had Easy a vision, e. didn't have no money, though. Easy E. And his homeboy, Easy E, was believe. selling dope in the hood, had abundance. I believe So it. he could invest in his homeboy's yeah. dream. Now, you know, uh, unfortunately, Easy ain't here with us no more. I However, Dr. Dre is a billionaire, Absolutely. and Ice Cube ain't far behind. Oh, man. You dig what I'm saying? Come on, so, man. I mean, we have to look at the totality of the circumstances. Yeah. It can't just focus on the negative. Well, we every, all pistons need to be firing. Like, I'm, you know, I ain't, I ain't I'm, I'm not here to promote traffic as I would have. No, nah, we, you know what I'm saying? We ain't got to promote. We don't have to. No, no, shit. I don't think. The I government don't, doing I want, it. We yeah. ain't got <laughs> We ain't got to promote. I want people to understand this. John F. Kennedy would have never been president of the United States of America if his father hadn't been a bootlegger. We, t- we you, discussed you, this in the class. You, you, you would not have, you you would not have such a great nation in terms of capitalistic opportunity had it not been for the great crime of slavery and stealing people. That's right. And allowing them or enforcing them that they reproduce. That was the first trip. Yeah. So we can't we can't act like any great thing has happened in America without a great crime That's real. or theft of some sort. That's so real. let's let's acknowledge that crime has been the American this way. This is the American way. But, was but, the founders yeah. of this great nation of ours, yeah. the fundamental <laughs> morals, standards, and principles Slave of this on your nation dollars. <laughs> is uh, get a whole lot by doing very little. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> you know absolutely. what I'm saying? <laughs> that is the principles that American, yeah. that American, uh, the American uh, fabric was built yeah. on. So you you have been... So a, we can't get too far. We ain't gonna never yeah, get too we, far away from that. Yeah, we have been victims of capital, capitalism and I believe you can stop being a victim of it and you can be a participant in it in a fair and equitable. I believe in compassionate capitalism. Right. People here, well, Mike and Tip bought a restaurant and we bought a restaurant and we it's not just we just bought a restaurant, we employ people. That's right. You know, we got to find a few million dollars to open up the restaurant. Nobody's, yeah. you know, it ain't like we can go to just run to people and say, hey, give this to us. And that brings me back to Greenwood. Right. And, you know, if you take any other bank in the world, they're going to say, man, two singers and dance want to open a restaurant. Well, that doesn't always go well. They don't, <laughs> they, they don't understand the significance of a 50-year successful restaurant. Right. They don't understand Miss Helen Harden's story. They don't understand that this restaurant, before trying to go national, would focus on dominating regionally places like 
with Alabama, Birmingham, Tampa, all the places Killer Mike and see out, T out and sang and dance. The first and places that were that were, that were that would book us for shows. Absolutely. Before we were playing a- arena. Absolutely. They don't even they don't right. even they don't but the but but a but ain't like Greenwood is a bank le- more likely to get that. They're more likely to be a lender. And that's not just saying who this is what I'm pivoting for. This is for any black person on the other side of this camera with a dream and ambition who understands the crack era gone. Ain't nobody becoming millionaires all crack no more. Right. So your homeboy who's selling pounds of weed appeals probably is never going to have enough to properly invest in you. That's real. But what you do have the ability to do is be financially literate in this moment, to be savvy about what you're doing. If you're getting a few thousand dollars from the government, how can you go ahead and start whatever thing you're trying to start and be about the business of being business? So we have to, like everyone else, transition out of the criminality phase. The crack era came, it did what it did for us, for those businesses that started doing it and doing well, God bless them. For those that trailed off, thank you for the example you said. But what it's time for us to do now is to do what a lot of dealers who got years and years, and that's understand money. That's real. You know, and, and now in understanding money, let's make sure that our children have a Greenwood account. Mm. Let's make sure that we're we're showing them how to bank right there on their phone and the importance of saving twenty cents on the dollars you make. So if you make tw- ten bucks, you're gonna save two dollars. Right. If you make you make twenty, you're gonna save four. Let's get that as a habit because that puts a more responsible person. And then how do we organize our money? And how do we organize our money and marry it with our vote? So that we can say, if we elect you into this office, we want this much of the city's budget pivoted to black banks. Now, this is something that, this is something, speaking of that, what you just said, what we want pivoted to black banks, uh, it was brought to my attention that uh, as far as uh, the the federal government support of banks, uh, a lot of times black banks don't get that support because they don't have uh, enough investors, is it? Yeah. Uh, could you explain well, that a little bit and how Greenwood is operating within or around this 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 fact? Yeah. Well, I let I let Ryan come back and, and with the actual bankers because I want that best explained and not just given happenstance by me. Okay. But I'd like to say this: even under President Obama, President one of the presidents of the Black Bank said enough is not being done to help us. Right. And that's not a that's not a severe criticism of Obama trying to take him down. It's just saying we have to begin to ask ourselves why. If we've given the Democratic Party and we elected a Democratic president with Senate and House, um, we had, you know, the, the, the power of the executive order of his pen. Why did the big banks get saved and the banks that are reflective of us not? Mm. 95 years of success with some of these banks, you know, and, and, and after that, what are we going to start to require of our vote? Right. You know what I mean? You got to hold them accountable. Yeah. We got to demand and, something. And, yeah, we got to know. So who are the people we're referring to? Why, why are we doing more listening to scholars and the opinions of cultural critics or social social experts than we are actual economics people or people who ran government. Claude Anderson, whether you agree with him or not, or whoever you know chooses to try to argue with the elder, he's ran city government. Right. So he understands how money fundamentally affects government. You know, when you look at a person um, like, um, who's the other person? Uh, Walter E. Williams. Very conservative. Some people like, some people don't. He's an economist. Right. I got to listen to him. Right. My grandma, you know, my grandma didn't t- tell me how to sweep a floor. She showed me how to sweep a floor. Right That's how I know how to sweep a floor. So for me, I just want to say black people, don't just listen to the information that makes you feel good right. or that makes you feel right. Or that you agree with. My man. You know what I mean? Give it to those you don't and learn from that. Because you can't tell me. Like um, one of the new city councilmen popped up on my Twitter feed when the te- when 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 our mayor said the thing about Lemon Pepper Wings Clubs. I said absolutely, it's important they know it all. Mm-hmm. See, don't just know the Blue Flame and not know it's in the Carrier Heights. Carrier Heights is st- historically recognized black neighborhood, and if you don't have Mr. Cato there, right. you never get that club there. You never get all you know. You never get what you get out of that neighborhood in terms of totality of the black experience. So it's all interconnected, right? What what I'm trying to tell people is that we need to be doing. We need to be acknowledging it all. And a big part of the acknowledgement of the Tulsa, Oklahoma riot right now is to move past that victimization that happened and to move into the spirit of Greenwood and return to what that community knew. And that's self-reliance, self-sufficiency, and cooperating with the bigger economy. If, remember, me and the head of the feds here, we don't even talk, and we agreed on that. If the black community here does better, the wider community does better. So... If we focus our money and our votes locally in Atlanta, we stay a more progressive city. A city councilman hit me here when after, I, after I praised the mayor and said, well, in addition to, and he talked about the wealth disparity in Atlanta. And I didn't want to go back and forth. 
So I'm going to have a meeting with him one day mm-hmm. because as a city council person, I need you being a hope provider. Yeah. It's a, you ran on a campaign of, hey, these disparities exist, but you're not going to do that and not acknowledge that TIP is developing Bankhead right. or that we're developing in the bluff. Right. You're not going to acknowledge that we haven't reopened the restaurant and supplied jobs. You're right. not going to not acknowledge that. Or, to and, create, and, or, or, or creating a... a, a a destination for tourism absolutely, with the trap music Absolutely. Museum. You're not going to ignore that because if you ignore that, you stop the potential of the next Herman Russell. That's real. You stop the potential of, of the next Noel Khalil. You stop that potential because someone c- came in on the tweet later and I appreciate him saying, that doesn't stop the, the inspiration Atlanta provides. Right. Our mayor grew up in the same community we did, right. went to the exact same school, High school. went to an HBCU, That's and is real. running the most powerful economy and city-wise in the South now. That's a little black girl off the west and side the of the And the most map. powerful yeah. for black folk. Yeah, you're not going to rob because you're constantly pandering. Mm. You're not going to rob and that's not an insult to him, but that's just saying this is how black people get elected. Mm-hmm. Oh, we left without. We need somebody to fight for us. Well, what does a fight look like? Let's talk about <laughs> moving some city money, yeah. not only into subsidizing programs, but programs that offer economic opportunity and a push into entrepreneurship. And if you don't do that, mm. then you are failing us at every step of the way. And that's what I want to say to government. South Fulton is 98% black. Right. What are those contracts going to look like? Well, you get what I'm saying. You have an excellent point. We got to grow businesses, man. So yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm Greenwood, 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 www.bankgreenwood.com. Now, before you go, because they 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 want us to wrap up. So yeah. before you go, I want to I want to say that uh, speaking on behalf of Greenwood, Greenwood feature services including yeah, no hidden fees, nope, two day early pay, yep, and Apple and Android pay. Apple and Android pay. Yeah. Okay. Will Greenwood remain digital or eventually have brick and mortar locations? It's r- digital for now. I'm an advocate of brick and mortars. I think sometimes they, you know, if you're going to pick up a quarter million dollars, go buy a car cash, you might want to. Yeah. You might want to walk in. So, you know, right. we'll see what happens with that. But we are digital for now. But 65 of Americans bank. My wife banks from the bed on her phone. My mm. children bank. Me and you, I would imagine, still like going in and seeing the money counter. Sure. That feels now, good. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, 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 it makes you feel accomplished with your it dad. It does. I can't you even lie. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I grew up go, waking up, going to the bank with my dad and sitting there with him all day yeah. while he, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, make deposits and withdrawals Absolutely. and so on. So Absolutely. it's just a habit for me. I like it. I like now, going. Let me ask you this. What is Greenwood's Roundup program? Can you can you tell us about that? I can. I'm going to let Ryan come in. Okay, you. cool. No problem. The Roundup program. Actually, I can. The Roundup okay, program. Cool helps, um, like the United Negro College Fund, NAACP, things of that nature, they're national organizations. I'm a personal believer in doing stuff very small or regional, okay. which is why I support the Gary Davis Academy. And one of the national ones I do support is racial justice now. But we have several organizations that have long-term done a lot of good for us. So there are amounts that you're going to be able to round up to, I believe. And when you do, those, those every, every account that's open, things of that nature, there is something to go to the greater community okay. to help recreate the next you, the next right. responsible black person. Okay. But Ryan should talk about that. Well, Ryan, you, hey, man, Ryan Glover. Yeah, we'll uh, get him down Been here. a personal partner, man, for yeah. uh, decades. Yeah. So, you know, is a open, there's an open door uh, invitation. Anytime you want to come and sit down, talk about Greenwood, or any of your other endeavors you have, you have an invitation here. Now, a uh, tradition here that we have uh, expeditiously is the word of the week. So, hmm. the word of the week is usually a word that is somewhere pulled from the conversation or somewhere rep- a representative of the guest. Yeah. Now, the word for the day that I will use, uh, given my, my, my partner, here, uh, Killer Mike, and what he's representing in his in his endeavor with Greenwood, opulence. Wow, opulence. Opulence means well means great wealth or luxuriousness. Also, riches, affluence, and abundance. Come on, now. okay. Uh, let me see here. I'll use it in a sentence now so people could go on and pretend that they knew this word before they heard before they heard us use it here. Um, let's see. I got one. Okay, go when ahead. When I first came to your house, the opulence of the decorum was, was awe-inspiring. Oh, man. Well, thank you. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that is the sentence <laughs> for opulence, the word of the week here expeditionally. This is my guest, Killer Mike, also my brother. Absolutely. I love and, you. 
and my and my and my business, business party. party. You <laughs> dig what I'm saying? It's very important that you guys know we ain't just partners yeah. and we ain't just friends and we don't just rap together. Yes, we absolutely. also buy and build companies. Absolutely, together. absolutely. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, and this has been Expedition. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.